Hi, this is PDF Berserk Arcade at berserkarcade.com, and this is tutorial 129. Now, we're creating our items, so let's just go ahead and open up Unity and Model Develop, and we'll continue on where we left off in our last tutorial, and that was filling in the parameters for our items. So I'm just going to keep the name, uh, a random name for now, but I want to go through the rest of the parameters that we have for items, or for, or for our weapons. So I'm going to start off with the actual ones that are listed under the, the weapon class. And I'm actually just going to, whoops, wrong key. I'm just actually going to cut and paste these right into our item generator. And I'll put it down here. And then just delete a lot of it. Since we know our item is actually called temp, and to be honest, to make it a little easier for those who are not uh, all up to par on programming, I'm actually going to change some of these variables around. I'm going to call this item. So we know that when we're creating an item, we're, we were actually what the variable name was going to be. That means we're going to have to return the item. Now down here, I'm going to use weapon. Just so it's a little clearer exactly what variables we're working on, because if I keep it called temp here and then I call it temp down here, then when we get to armor, I call it temp down there. It might get a little confusing for someone who's just really not up to par for uh, programming. So let's come down here. We're going to want to assign the max damage. So we can say weapon dot max damage. And if we look in the drop down, it tells us it's looking for an integer. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to assign just a random range again, since I want everything to be random. And for now, I want all weapons to pretty much be the exact same, or at least have the, the chance to be the exact same. So I'm going to say my random range for my max damage is going to be 5 to 10. Now, random range, if I just did 5 to 10, all the items that I would come out with for, for their max damage would actually be from 5 to 9. This last number is not inclusive, and so it only goes up to that number, but not including it. So if I actually want to have weapons that have a max damage of 10, I actually have to go one above it, which is 11. All right, so I got that done. And I'm just going to quickly put some comments above them. Next, I want to have a damage variance. So weapon dot damage variance. Uh, I forgot to take a look to see what that takes. So damage variance, and if we look, it wants a float back. Now I remember this as being a percentage of the max damage. So I'm going to assign another random range. And I want this range to be anywhere from 20% of max damage to... Well, let's say on the high end, you could get up to 75%. And of course, we want to make sure that if we actually want 75%, we have to go one higher, so 76. And we got this done. So since this is all damage, I'm going to keep it listed together. Now damage type, since it's you know uh, dealing with damage, I'm going to keep these listed together. Damage type is probably not something I'm going to really cover in the basic set, but I'm still going to include a value here uh, just to fill in our our variables. So I'm going to say weapon dot damage type. And this is going to be equal to the, the numeration we set up before. So damage type dot, and I'm just going to make every weapon slashing to start off with. Now for max range, uh, there's two basic ways we can work with this. I'm thinking that it would probably be better off to create a separate function for melee weapons and ranged weapons. But the way max range works is it basically uh, adds range to how far you can attack your character or attack a mob from. So we'll come up here and I'm just going to make some constants for this so I don't have to keep finding it. 
as we go down. So this is going to be basically the base range for melee weapons and the base range for missile weapons or well ranged weapons. So I'm going to make them public and they're of type constant and they're going to be int sorry of type int and they are constant and I'm just going to call it base melee range and I'm just going to set it off to equal one and I'm going to want another one and this is going to be base ranged range and I'm just going to set that to be equal to five at the start so I'm going to come down and say weapon dot range or max range is equal to base melee range. Now because I've done that down here I'm actually going to switch this one to melee weapon, create a new class private static weapon create weapon and in here we're going to want to decide if we make a melee or ranged weapon and for now I'm just going to say we're just going to work on our melee weapon so instead of having it choose for us we're just going to tell it so we'll say weapon is equal to create melee weapon. We'll want to return that weapon. I'll save that off. And I guess I'll change this variable to melee weapon just to keep it a little less confusing for people I'm actually just going to cut and paste and one more and down here return the melee weapon. There we go. I'm just going to go to Unity to make sure there's no errors. And yeah, we do have one. Uh, so the name Temp does not exist. All right. Where do we have that? Uh, right here so we're actually doing a melee weapon now okay now I want to go over why I just created this extra method up here and I just wanted to go through basically the flow of it so we're going to decide what type of item to make and for now we're just going to say we're making a weapon so it calls this function called create weapon now when we get down here it's going to want to decide you know what kind of weapon we're we going to make because we have two different types of weapons we can make we can make ranged and we can make melee so it'll decide which type to make and uh, for now we're just going to do melee so we'll basically just have a little if block up here but for now we're just going to do melee so it's going to call this here create melee weapon and basically it just goes in it creates a new weapon of you know type melee and fills its fills in its properties and just returns it so that item ends up getting returned back here to weapon and that weapon in turn just gets returned back here and then we return that <laughs> all the way back to uh, the chest when it called it. So I'm going to change the actual name here to MW for melee weapon. And I'm going to stop and go look at buff items now. Buff item, uh, we haven't really touched buffs and I want to actually get the magic system in place before we actually start playing around with things like buffs. But remember it was a hash table of basically the buffs that uh, items can have or at least the item does have. And like I said, I want to wait till we actually get the magic system in place before we start playing around with that because 
basically when you equip the item it just casts a spell on you so we'll come back to item and we have this list of things that items can have all right so we'll just cut those we'll come back into item generator and since all items have these I don't want to put it under weapon because or sorry melee weapon because when I create my ranged weapon it's gonna have I'm gonna to have to fill them all up there as well and then when I create armor later on I'm gonna to have to fill all these same things out for for the armor so what we can do is actually come up here put them in up here since all items possess these we know that we can come up here and assign them under the create item part so we can say item dot and I forgot the first one name well we've already done name down under weapon so let's actually just take that move it up here for now uh, well, I'm gonna leave it there because we actually have it as a melee weapon and that's how we're distinguishing what type of weapon is being created right now so I'm just gonna actually comment this one out because eventually I will want to move that up here but we're going to be constructing the name of our weapon based on several different things uh, for instance the type of weapon it is for instance a short sword axe morning star but we'll also want to add some sort of prefix to it based on what type of material it's made out of so it could be you know a steel morning star or a bronze sword or and when we add that prefix we'll be adding that up here so for now we're just going to comment that out and next will be value that's fine we can do that down here item dot value it's going to be equal to random dot range so we're, again we'll do another random range and for now I'm just going to say all items in game are randomly worth uh, 1 to 100 uh, next will be rarity type uh, rarity types is something I probably won't be getting into yet but I still want to assign the value. Right now I'm just going to make everything common. So item dot rarity type, or I guess it'd be rarity, is equal to rarity types dot, and like I said, I'll make everything common. Now we're going to want the current max uh, durability. So item dot, I'm just going to get the max durability first, is equal to random dot range, and I'll say, uh, for starters, all items are going to be anywhere from 50 to 60 for durability. And when the item is first created, I want to make sure that it's you know brand new, fresh, crisp, unused. So I'm going to actually set the item dot current durability to equal the item dot max durability. So it starts off basically at full health. Uh, while I'm compiling the video, I'll go ahead and actually comment these. But go ahead and comment them just like we did down here where you're basically just saying you're assigning the value to the item. And I'm going to quickly save that off. I'm going to go into Unity, see if there's any typos. Nothing popped up. So if we start it, we won't actually be able to see those values put out yet. But it should still work and you can't quite see it because my button isn't wide enough but you can actually tell that there is something before the W. So let's go ahead and actually start creating uh, some way to actually see these values in action. Uh, the easiest way to be the, the easiest way to uh, <laughs> my tongue is all twisted up today. So the easiest way to actually do this would be to actually start creating our tooltips for our items but since we're already over 14 minutes in this video, I'm just going to call this one done and we'll start it up in the next one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.